Well, good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm looking kind of rough. I'm just getting my day started. Well, I mean, I've been up three hours already, but, you know. <laughs> um, so, I'm on live this morning to talk about the agenda for tonight's city council meeting. Um, some of you are aware that we had a special meeting yesterday, which was a joint meeting between the city council and the EDC. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not often at a loss for words, but some of the things that happen, I, I just, I, I have no words. Um, our executive session, the chief of police had to come in the room three times because of the yelling and the screaming and the disrespect and the egos. And I just, I, I, I finally figured out what it is. And I'm going to say this and I don't care who hears it and how they want to interpret it, but it's all about egos. That's what it's about. The mayor wants to be in control. He doesn't want anybody. Uh, he doesn't want anybody, uh, to be able to talk and express themselves. If he doesn't like what's said, he tries to shut them down. And that's when the yelling and screaming starts. And it's, it's all about egos. That's all it's about. And you can hear it in the open meetings too, because he'll, he'll do the same thing in open meetings. He tried to do it with me yesterday. Um, I can, I can withstand that and get him to back off and let me speak without losing my mind. I don't have to yell and scream. I can be very, um, I, I can be very persuasive. I'm a lawyer. Hello. Without having to do that. It's, it's all about self-control. It's about checking your ego at the door and, and having some self-control. I listen to, uh, Pastor David Jeremiah from, uh, San Diego every morning. He does, uh, he has a radio broadcast. He has a television broadcast. My husband and I have been listening to him for years, probably as long as we've been together. And this morning, uh, his sermon was about self-control. It was also about time management, which I, I needed that too. But it was, a, it was mostly about self-control. And that's what, that, that, that's, that's what all of the blow-ups are about. It's about a lack of self-control, lack of self-discipline, egos that get out of control, and, and wanting to be in control. You can be the, the presiding officer over a meeting. That, that's what the mayor always says. I'm the presiding officer. I'm the presiding. You can do that without the kind of behavior and antics that we saw yesterday. I, the, I, the words fail me. Okay, so let's get to the business at hand. Let me tell you a little bit about what happened yesterday. So the meeting yesterday primarily was to discover the, um, the plans, the goals, uh, the work that's been done by the EDC, specifically the director that we've had in place for over a year now. Uh, and we were also reviewing his um, contract, which expired in November. So he currently is not under contract with the city of Port Arthur, but he's still working. He has no authority to do any business on behalf of the city. There's, there's so many moving parts to this that need to be addressed that we did not address yesterday. And, and once I got home and was able to calm down from the ridiculousness that happened and start to wrap my brain around some of this stuff and have some conversations with a few people about it, um, we've got some problems. I don't want to renew his contract. And, and the vote to renew his contract failed yesterday because it was a tie. Ms. Hamilton wasn't in attendance yesterday. Imagine that. Um, and so it was a three to three vote. It was myself, uh, Lewis and Doucette. We voted not to renew. And then the mayor, Ken Law and Franks voted to renew. So it, it failed. So that means we have to bring it back uh, on February 27th. But this man has been out of his contract since November the 19th, I think. And so somebody on the board tried to say, tried to say that it was a, a, oh, he's month to month. There's no such thing. You can be month to month on a lease. Okay. Not on an employment contract, unless there is a term, some, some terminology in there that says so. His contract does not say that. 
He's not a, a month-to-month employee. So anyway, oh, let me just apologize for my birds. It's too cold for them to go outside yet, and they're going to lose their minds here. Um, anyway, so his contract was not renewed. I don't want to renew his contract for a number of reasons. Number one, he's been talking, and, and you can go back and watch this meeting. Well, sorry, Spectrum Internet decided to glitch again. I, those of you that are friends with me on my personal page, I was griping about this the other day. Spectrum is horrible. It goes out at least once every day, and it, it just did it and kicked me off my live broadcast. So anyway, th I'm going to pick up where I left off. So if you, if you didn't see it, you'll have to go back and catch the couple of minutes. So you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, I was talking about the EDC director. So the master plan, don't have it. Strategic plan, working on it, don't have it. I've been working on it for a whole year, over a year. Um, I hope to have it done in the spring. Okay, well, the, we're, we're almost to spring. Uh, can you give us a, a date? March, April? Um, didn't get a date. Then there's uh, the fact that um, he was supposed to move to the city of Port Arthur within nine months of his original contract. So he signed in November of 22. Nine months would have been May. He still doesn't live in the city of Port Arthur. And he's worked for us for over a year now. Well, the, the board wanted to extend that and give him 18 months from his original contract sign date. Okay? which would be May of this year. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm opposed to this. And, and Council Member Doucette took him to task on that too, because when he signed that contract, he knew that he had nine months to move into the city limits of Port Arthur. Uh, he lives in the city limits of Nederland. Um, he has allegedly signed a lease for the new apartments that are going in down on Proctor Street, which are not ready yet. And the mayor claims that, oh, they're going to have certificates of occupancy uh, within just a few months. That is bull. Drive by there. Drive by there and see. So there, there's a breach of his contract right there. And then um, I've been getting reports from different people uh, and I mentioned this in a meeting before, and additional reports have come in since then, that people are inquiring, businesses and congressmen's offices are inquiring about officing at the press building. Beautiful, you know, millions of dollars went into it, tons of office space available, and you know what they're told? There's nothing available. That is bullshit. Excuse my language, but it is. Our uh, EDC CEO says, that's not true. Nobody's called me. I'm... So all these people are lying? And the mayor claims that he talked to Congressman Weber's office. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some phone calls, and I'm going to confirm. Because it came from one of his senior staff members that they called and inquired about office space, and they were told there was nothing available. <sighs> Lots of lies being told. And there have been some businesses turned away from the business park out on uh, West Port Arthur Road. He claims that's not true. He claims that he has brought some people in, that he's currently whining and dining, uh, you know, some business that's going to bring in 400 permanent jobs. Well, we haven't seen any of this, none of it. And he has worked at the tune of $180,000 salary for the city since November of 22. And right now he's not under contract because it expired in November of 23. <sighs> Nothing to show for it. And he's asking for more money. Um, as far as travel, as far as education, as far as his car allowance, to the tune of about $25,000 that wasn't in the original contract. We paid him moving expenses, uh, reimbursable up to $10,000 to move to the city of Port Arthur. You know what the excuse was? Oh, well, he moved to the area. I think he came from Victoria, so he moved from the area. 
uh, or moved into the area from where he came from. You know what? I live in the middle of a bunch of apartment complexes off of Jimmy Johnson Boulevard, and every single one of them has availability. He could have moved into any one of them. They have they have flags out front now leasing, move in specials. There's there's five or six apartment complexes right around Jimmy Johnson and Ninth Avenue. I've even been to some of them, and I know that they have apartments available. Nice ones. The Ninth Avenue Station, that that new complex, and then there's one that uh, there's a couple of them around the golf course. They all have apartments available. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'm opposed to it. I'm going to keep voting no. He needs to be gone, and we need somebody who's going to come in there and actually work and bring revenue to the city. That's what he is supposed to do, is to bring businesses and revenue to the city, and he hasn't done any of that. So there's my two cents about that. Now let's talk about tonight's meeting. I can't believe we have to do this two days in a row. I just can't believe it. Uh, Mr. Dolcefino is going to be back talking about Acadian Ambulance again. You know, and I'll go ahead and say this now. Let me apologize again for my birds. They they want to go outside so bad, and it's too cold. Um, anyway, um, Acadian gave their notice that they will be leaving the city of Port Arthur. They are going to uh, give up their contract, and they are going to... Um, not be in the city of Port Arthur anymore for 911 services and for non-emergency. They will not work in the city of Port Arthur anymore. So I don't know why he needs to come and beat that dead horse again because it's, it's done. Uh, they have a 30 day window from the date that they notified the city and it's a date in March and then they, they will be done. So he's, uh, he's coming for that. Um, We've got some other people doing speaking and giving some presentations. Um, we got some travel. National League of Cities. I'm not going because it is during the week of our spring break. And um, I already have plans. My family is more important than a trip to Washington, D.C. Um I need to confirm the dates for this conference because we've got the mayor traveling March 8th through the 14th. We've got council member Lewis traveling the 10th through the 14th. And then we've got council member Frank from the 8th to the 14th. So I want to find out what is, when does it start? Because we are allowed if a conference starts on, let's say it starts on the, on the 10th. Okay. We're allowed to travel a day early, which would be the 9th. Uh, and if it ends, on the 13th, we're allowed to stay uh, an additional day. So I'm going to have to go online and, and confirm the dates. And I, I didn't do that before I got on this live. Um, let's see. Our city manager has already traveled to um, the Texas City, Texas city Management Association. Uh, looks like it was a, maybe a training uh, in Austin. So, yeah, we've got some of that. All right. So. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot on the consent agenda or on the non-consent. Um, a lot of it is, um, things that we've already discussed and that we knew were going to come up for approval. So there's not a whole lot to, um, a whole lot to talk about on the non-consent or the consent agenda. Uh, but there is, um, a resolution calling for a public hearing to consider a zoning map amendment. And at first... You know, I had a little bit of an issue with this, but once I read the supporting documents, I, I really think it's okay because it's down on uh, Austin, 1428 Austin and 501 13th Street, and it's to re, uh, it's to change the zoning from uh, what we used to call uh, two-family to a planned development district. Uh, there is an existing warehouse there that used to be used for a record service, and that's what that's what this uh, this is for. It's Balu Towing and LLB Construction. Uh, they are wanting to use the existing warehouse um, and uh, develop a wrecker service. So, so I really I don't have much of a problem with that since it was used for that before. But we still because it is a zone change, we still have to do a public hearing. Birds. 
Goodness gracious. Okay. Uh, let's see. So the non-consent agenda, we've got some resolutions, and one of them has to do with the Stonegate drainage project. Um, and, I mean, we, we knew that this was coming, but I really... I really want to find out what, do we have any idea what our timeline is going to be on this? I mean, this is from Hurricane Harvey, which was in August of 2017, seven years ago. And I understand, you know, there was lots of government red tape with FEMA and the GLO and all that. Believe me, I know because I fought with FEMA and the GLO for, for our house because we flooded. So I understand. But I would really like to know if there is any, um, if there's any way that we can get some sort of timeline on this. Uh, the RFQs went out uh, back in September of 23, and we have selected Chica and Associates, which is, um, I can't remember where they're out of. Anyway, they were the ones that were selected to actually uh, do the project. Managed construction activities, blah, 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 all of that. So that's that's my main concern about that. And that's item number two on page six of the agenda if, you're, if you've got an agenda and you're following along. So the next one is non-consent item number three. Uh, this is about rehabilitation of the Pleasure Island Marina. I just want to know what that entails. It's a one point, almost $1.4 million project. Uh, with a company called Florida Floats uh, doing business as Bellingham Marine of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I just want to know what it's going to entail. What's that $1.4 million going to do? What's it going to be spent on? Rehabilitation of the marina is a very broad term, and I would like to know uh, some details about that. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else is on here. Okay, let's talk about the ambulance again. All right, so uh, non-consent agenda item number eight, this is on page eight, is a resolution authorizing the city manager to terminate the non-exclusive ambulance agreement with Acadian. So Acadian has decided to uh, terminate their agreement. So this wasn't anything that the city did. Uh, this was Acadian made the decision that they are going to terminate the agreement. And so they're trying to do it under the terms of the agreement where they've got 30 days. Uh, otherwise, if they tried to terminate early uh, or not do the 30 day notice, they'd have to pay the city. I think it's $100,000. So they're not doing that. Now, here's something that I do have a problem with. So this is under the ordinances, non-consent. Amending the city of Port Arthur budget again. We just did this last month. Why, why are we having to amend the budget that they worked on for nine months that we worked on as a council for, you know, a long time? Uh, and we approved it back in October. Why are we having to amend it now twice? I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I know we have a new finance director, which is all fine and good. And, you know, maybe they've uh, discovered mistakes in the budget. or I, I don't know. I would just like to know, why are we amending the budget? And this is for, um, let's see, increasing the general fund by 129000 The capital fund, oh, and the, oh misprints, uh, $1.2 Pleasure Island fund by 286000 a CDBG DR fund by four million, and the hazard mitigation fund by almost thirty six million. I, 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 again, this is one of those places where I have no words. Why? We just approved the budget in August. We amended it last month on January the thirtieth, and now here we are again, amending it again. So I, I need to understand. I need to understand because I don't. So, we're going to do this again tonight. I can't believe that we're doing this two days in a row, but we are. Um, I really hope, and I prayed about this this morning, 
that we don't have any more blow-ups and egos and whatever else it is, like what happened yesterday. When we got done, I had a headache, and it, I know it was because my blood pressure went up. There's just no reason for it. There's no reason for it. There's no excuse for it. It's unprofessional. It sends the wrong message. And it is, you know, the reputation of the city of Port Arthur is in the toilet anyway. This is just making it worse. Really and truly. People don't have respect for our city council, for our city leaders. Um, and it just really tarnishes the, the whole city. And here we are beautifying, you know, seven blocks of Woodworth Boulevard to the tune of $14 million. And um, putting all these pretty signs all over the place. And I just don't understand. Anyway, I have got other work to do that I need to get to. Um, because... At 1 o'clock today, I have to take my granddaughter to homeschool PE class at the Y. So i got to get some stuff done before then. Uh, if y'all have any questions, comments, uh, if you're having issues in your neighborhood, oh, that's one thing I, I do need to update on. I realize that what I tried to post on Facebook as far as the addresses of the driveways that are to be repaired, that it didn't – somehow Facebook did something and you couldn't open it. So I'm going to try to repost that in some other format later today, if I can. I tried to do it from my phone, and I think I'm, I'm going to have to do it from my laptop. Um, I did send that, though, to uh, Jody Holton so that she could share it at the Concerned Citizens of Griffin Park meeting, which happened last night that I couldn't go to because I was at this ridiculousness downtown. Um, because it mainly affects, as far as my district, it affects people in Griffin Park. So, uh if you are in Griffin Park and you you were not able to get that, I will try to post that um, a little bit later today, okay? So let me know if you have any questions. I know there's still uh, drainage and sewer problems in Stonegate. Believe me, I'm doing everything I can to help y'all. Um, so if you're having issues, please let me know so that I can help out, okay? Because if I don't know, I can't help. It's just like I tell my students at Lamar Port Arthur, you know, if you're having a problem, if you don't tell me, I cannot help you. So you got to tell me. Don't just assume that I know something. I drive around the district a lot, just kind of looking and checking on things. And um, I have asked for an agenda item for February 27th to get the developer from the Willow Place townhomes to come and talk about why he is in violation of his developer agreement. So that's coming. Um, so if, if I don't know about it, I can't do anything. So, and, and it, I don't care if it's, it, it, no issue is too small and no issue is too big. Okay. If your garbage isn't, get pick, isn't getting picked up, let me know. Uh, if there's um, code enforcement violations, let me know. Like I said, I drive around a lot, but I may not see the same things that you're seeing. I try to look at as much as I can and report as much as I can. Um, but I can't always see everything. So let me know. All right. Y'all have a good day. See you later.